I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. I'm The Voice, and today we've got Neeks, and we've got Rob. This is episode three. How's it going, guys? Pretty good, hey, everyone. pretty good. Yes, it's us again for the third time. <laughs> so, <laughs> still us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that will be us for a good time. Yeah. But we have good news, and we will talk about things we have, and that will be an interesting time again. I think so. I think so. We got a lot of a lot of stuff has happened in the crypto world over the last couple of weeks. So yeah. it's a, a good we got time some to things start to talk doing about. these because every two weeks there's something new. So <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh, at, at many levels. You want to start talking, like get an update on the having, how that went, and all that kind of stuff. You want to talk about that right now? I think that would be good. What do you think, Neeks? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Let's start but, with that. Yeah, yeah. What would you like to add, uh, Rob? Uh, well, it, we it's passed, <laughs> so, <laughs> and it's like you know, like while you we were going through it, like I went to a having party. I don't know what else, you know. I was I live in Puerto Rico. There's a lot of crypto people there, so there was a having party, and uh, it was it was good. Uh, but you know, like the block before and the block after, nothing really changed. Like it's it, except for miners, of course. But uh, like for the rest of us, nothing really changed at that block. Yeah. But those fees were fun uh, around that time. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that was pretty, that was weird because I don't know if, about you, but I was trying to move Bitcoin at the time and I just said, no, uh, I'm not doing that. But, but didn't your Bitcoin go to a million? Your it one did Bitcoin not. for a million dollars? It didn't do that. My Bitcoin did not go to a million. I don't know what your Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> but that's Neek's, what we heard. Neek's Bitcoin did. He's he's now. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's the issue that I think yeah. is is both painful because I can uh, you know you can't really empathize with how people get into situations, but you can feel for it. Um, some people really don't dig in uh, to some of the fundamentals, which is yeah. only solely, fully, firmly standing on emotion. And emotion is a very fickle thing. And yeah. people will listen to uh, influencers and they'll even pay some of these influencers for their opinion on things, which is okay. I mean, some of them have some good information, some of them maybe not so much so, but anytime somebody gets into a, a, a proposition to where they're told that in so many years, so many weeks, so many hours at a specific block, this magic thing happens and you're gonna, you know, buy your Lombo. Mm. Yeah. You're 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 putting your money in the wrong place. You really shouldn't get me started on influencers because it's I just I don't have a good opinion. I think there's some there are some good people out there. Yeah. But it's really it's it's one in a thousand, and there are thousands of influencers. I mean, like and so it's very difficult. There are some good ones. Uh, I think so. so I don't yeah. mean to malign the entire uh, industry, but boy, there's been really some. We talked about it last time. There's been really. It's hard for me to. Um, just a side note: my my cousin, no, my nephew, is like 16 and he wants to trade now. And he came to me. He's like, "This guy said," and that guy said. I was like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa." <laughs> <laughs> you know, turn Please off stop. the YouTube, you know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, turn but off yeah, the YouTube I mean, is, is, is true. <laughs> and I think, I think that's, I think it's calmed down a little bit, um, because, you know, I said nothing happened. Um, yeah. I say nothing, but you know, the fees skyrocketed, the miners are making half, um, and, um, but, but they're even making it fees, all up was, in, in the fees. So that's, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's been I mean, happening. And now people are, have you seen people are complaining that the fees are back down and now our security budget is over. Our Bitcoin security budget is over. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's still huge. I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. That's so right. uh, I was just looking at the fees. Where did I put that? Oh, so it went up to, I think my thing is saying $128. For a transaction. Yeah, it depends the source you look at, but yeah. it was, uh, yeah, it was on the most common source, so 128.45. Wow. And it, but it really, it's the uh, daily average. It's not yeah. the one-time fee. I think it went way, way higher than that. Oh, my but, God. Uh, 
yeah, so what we see when you were saying that now it's uh, calming down a little bit, that's also because um, the price, right? The price is consolidating. We all talked about that a little bit last time. Yeah. And I do believe that it will continue a little bit. It's rarely like uh, we've never seen just a direct jump after the halving. That's, yeah. that's not really how it happens. So now you have the disappointments and <laughs> yes. I'm sure we'll have the bad news and, you know, newspaper yeah. now printing bad news. And right. so we'll we had a couple probably of months have of a few months. Yeah. Sorry? We have a couple. I agree with you. We have a couple of months of, of kind of like this, some sideways action. We'll have some spurts and dips, but, you know, the, the fun, you know, historically happens later. Um, yeah, that's, so. that's what I think, too. One thing that we can definitely, a lesson that we can take is that we were constantly talking about Ethereum having scaling issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty clear now that um, Bitcoin will have the same scaling issues because yeah. right now it's really just a very uh, minimal part of the economy and it's already having situations like this one. And it's definitely not going to slow down. Uh, that is going to be a more and more important problem moving forward. And, and really, we can see that uh, fees on, on Ethereum at their peak were $71, the, the average uh, daily fees, $71.72 it was in 2021. And, and now on Bitcoin, it's one twenty eight, so like 50% yeah. more or something like that. Yeah, it's even more. Yeah, so it kind of leads into we can talk about more later, but that that's why we keep bringing up side chains, and there yeah. are side chains for Bitcoin, but all of them work in a similar way. They're doing the best they can. The technology is is limited on on what they can do, um, and so some uh, have these big multi sig wallets. Some of these have these f federated systems that um, there's a lot of nodes between one thing and another. Um, so there are, I mean, there's good as can be. And so there's some that are doing side chains. I, I hate, hate to call them side chains because they're not directly attached in the way we like to think, but yeah. they are, you know, you can, you can use them and then the fees are lower there. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, it, it's the best use case and it's why we want to expand this technology. Yeah. That's right. With yeah. the there, side chains, it's, Sorry, Vice. With the side oh, chain, ahead. it's uh, completely different. Like the ability to have one dedicated side chain for a specific purpose will completely change the environment, right? Like you don't have the yeah. same uh, limitations that you have now with their runes and basically all the new things that are coming to Bitcoin. It is going to be way worse than it is now. And having the ability yeah. to offload that on a separate chain while not losing any of the trustless operations, mm -hmm. right, is really key moving forward. And the ability to connect, like this is even a second thing, the ability to connect those chains immediately with other, with other assets makes it a, a completely, a much more appropriate uh, solutions for interoperability moving forward, for scalability moving forward. Um, and it really for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and DV and, and any other chain, really. Yeah, it's, it's a little frustrating to have this technology and need to develop the technology and then know that to get it into something like Bitcoin is, even if it was fully fledged out right now, uh, that would be a challenge. Like there's a process there and it, it could take years. Uh, it's frustrating uh, for me because... The solution that fixes a lot of this is, is something that we're pursuing right now. And well, anyway, Correct. we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to add that, you know, obviously the people that are, you know, the, the, the group that's behind ordinals and, and runes and those kinds of things, what they're trying to do is really build in some type of, even if it's meme ish utility function yes. and they still embrace the, Bitcoin blockchain from its UTXO functionality. I don't know about you guys, but I embrace that same UTXO process. I, I the whole the whole ledger it, itself, and that's what I think that also brings side chains into being. Although we are agnostic in in that kind of a, approach, I really do like this the UTXO model. Okay. Going back onto the fees, fees are 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 just to go back full circle again. It, everything's 
sort of leveling out, right? Obviously, the people were doubling what the fees were, and they were making up for that having in the uh, increase for some of the runes transactions. Right now, it's it's pretty it's pretty smooth at this point in time. So yeah, I just embrace what they're again. doing. I yeah. embrace the utility so function. I think that's essentially where we are. Pardon? <laughs> yeah, it's too low yeah. already. But exactly. that's what I'm but, saying. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that the whole. The whole idea they have, the whole passion behind that, although I'm not a big NFT person, I'm not a big meme coin person at all. I think that's not where my focus or my passion is. I do embrace what they're trying to do, which is essentially build utility. And I think yeah. that's what a lot of blockchains are lacking. And that's what side chains is wholly, solely focused on. Mm -hmm. So that's, we agree on some things. We could uh we could actually talk. There's another big piece of news that came out um like this it was just this last last week, right? About Samurai Wallet. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> we could talk about. I mean, <laughs> that was. Um, I, I'm bringing that. Like we could talk later about like what another implementation might that might look like. But that was pretty big news because people were yeah. using that. Um, how do you guys feel about mixing as a as a service, I should say, that's what they were providing. Right. Um, so that's, that's a bit of a sensitive situation, right? Because yeah. mm -hmm. there is the privacy aspect and then there is the illegal aspect with mm. the criminal association and all that. And obviously the criminal things are like, for me, it's kind of the dumb thing they should never have done because in, in the source I've seen, uh, I've seen that they really were uh, basically advertising and targeting people who do illegal activities. And I, I think this is really um, a very bad thing. Now, I think we're all for privacy. And yeah. we, I, I think that we don't have anything by default against mixers. Now we understand that uh, regulation is not really uh, welcoming to, to those things. I wanted to bring an interesting number, actually. Um, what they are accused of is having transacted about $2 billion of volume. Mm -hmm. And having about a hundred million dollar uh, that is actually accused of being linked to criminal activities. So if you actually look at that number, it's it's about five percent. So even with that thing that was unregulated and that was you know basically um, probably one of the best avenue for criminals, the the number is just at five percent. Yeah, it's that's... about the same number you have in fiat in the highly regulated environment. Right. Yeah, so you have it highly regulated. Point. This is an unregulated, and it's the same number. Yeah, That's right. Exactly. It's also <laughs> funny. It's like it's like that Elizabeth Warren garbage, right? She's like, oh, it's you know, criminals are using it, using crypto, and it's like, it's like le way less than than they use the dollar, and it's like two percent of of transactions or some some small. I can't remember what it was. A really small number of the transactions are were found to be you know of criminal intent. It's such a it's it's really a garbage, uh, like they're not saving anybody. They're you know they're not nobody's being harmed this way. Um, yeah, I, I, like, it, and when I say nobody, I mean I am sure that there's a criminal that harmed somebody that used a mixing service. I'm sure that happened, but you know there's like they're going after. I'm not sure how this stops them, right? Because it, they're not stopped in the normal banks either. I think so, we have to separate like, privacy and anonymity because those are really two separate things. Bitcoin has privacy, Litecoin has mm -hmm. privacy, Divi has privacy, right? Mm -hmm. So we have chains. They are private as long as you're not, um, obviously sharing your address is one way to right. make it so it's a little bit more public. Satoshi mm -hmm. didn't make an anonymity protocol, right? There's people who thought that he should have and thought mm -hmm. that he could have, but he wanted to make sure a ledger was public. And everybody could have a copy of it and everybody could validate that ledger. Um, so privacy is built in. I think really when we start getting into mixing, it goes beyond privacy and starts to build in or lean towards anonymity. And that's where it starts graying. And I'm not against anonymity at all or mm -hmm. pseudo anonymity or privacy. But but the minute you start promoting a privacy service to criminals 
you, yeah. you, you highlight that you're actually embracing illegal activity. Yeah. And if you there think that people uh, are going to ignore that, you're crazy. Yeah. There's, a, there was, um, some secure phones companies they're like they were making privacy phones and then mm -hmm. it became very, there's a great, there's a great, uh, episode on this on dark side Di diaries. They were, they were doing exactly that. They were, they were advertising to cartels and drug dealers and so forth about having a private phone <laughs> and wow. yeah, they, you know, they got busted. And then, then the fun part is, uh, the feds did that themselves. Um, so they had their own, <laughs> of course, they had their own phone company and they were selling privacy phones and they were attracting the criminals that, I mean, they're trying to do it. So like those guys aren't, aren't dummies either. So like to go out and and, and be very blatant, I think you guys were reading the, uh, the, the advertising stuff before to be blatant about it is just, that's just a dumb move. I think. Yeah. Um, I'm all for mixing. Like I can imagine a lot of scenarios where I'm paying somebody for a while. Now they know that address is me and I don't want that to happen anymore. So I'm going to take those funds and I want to mix them and to get it away from the person I was paying before. It's maybe none of their business, relationship. right? Exactly. So I can see a lot of scenarios where it makes sense to mix funds so that the people you know are, you are no longer acquainted with can't attach addresses to you um or you know or follow funds you know that are, are attached to you they shouldn't that's the privacy i want privacy that's uh, right um, now uh, in a way um i feel like it will be an even big an even bigger fight than the sovereignty one because mm -hmm. really data is kind of at the center of how everything is sold today sure. so being able to track data um is is key for companies for governments um, it has been so integrated into protocols and all yeah. the processes now that I feel it will be even harder. And to be able to fight on that, like we should basically already have sovereignty, right? We should already be in control of our funds, already in control of our nodes to be able to pretend um, to have some privacy. Because if you're going through an intermediary, you, you basically don't have any privacy, right? So... Right. I think it would be a very interesting situation. Now, obviously, um, as you mentioned, uh, advertising for criminal activity is really dumb and it's counterproductive because, like, as you say, there are very legitimate use cases. Um, you receive a payment. You don't want to group it with the rest of your money so mm -hmm. that the person who sent you $3 <laughs> is now able to see all your account and mm -hmm. everything. Like, obviously, there, there is a huge use case for it. Now, um, those, those situations actually tainted, right? Yeah. Well, so, if, you, if Rob sends me a payment and it comes from his account, um, I see a payment come in. It doesn't share his whole account data with me. Um, so I, I can't really, unless he gives me his account and I have the tools to do it, and that's not necessarily publicly readily available to the average person. I can't query the account to get a balance, although that is possible. We know that debit cards do that and other services do that. That's a that's a both a governmental and a, again a data data privacy issue. But the average person can't do that. So it comes down to if you're paying the guy to mow your lawn and you pay him, does he need to know that you have four Bitcoin in there or a million divi or whatever it doesn't really matter it, it 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 you should be able to pay now remember most of these blockchains have a privacy mechanism in them they have change address so you're always using in many cases a new address where this really becomes a problem is people who use um light wallets right light wallets will use usually uh um either one or maybe a few addresses like you'll get one for a a taproot address, you get a BEC32, you get a, a legacy address. You really only have three addresses. And so unless you're an advanced user and you're using light wallets, um, anybody can know what you have. And there's nothing wrong with that, um, but it, 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 it does ruin your privacy a little bit. So if you use a service that is also has an API, it has to broadcast transactions through an API, or it has to query your transactions through an API, you get into that data situation. There is no privacy really in those data situations because 
all that 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 endpoint has to do is watch for your address. That's why running your own nodes is far more important. Um, running so your own wallet is far more important. You were mentioning important. about the change address and all that. Yeah. Um, you're familiar with like situations like chains, right? The thing is that if you are using your wallet long enough, at some point, like if you receive the payment for something, right? Like let's say I send sure. you now $3 on an address that you shared with me or that I found of yours mm -hmm. right, for any reason. And then I send you dust on it, right? And so at some point you will make a send and it will use, it will use that dust to send out. And that's where some links will be able to be done with you of know, course. your other addresses of course. and uh, explorers like chains who have a database and probably some algorithm to be able to link those addresses together um, will be able to highlight that. And so with one address, if that address has been used enough by that wallet, you will be able to identify one, two, some, potentially all of the addresses that have been used of the wallet. So it, yeah. it is still, unless you're a very advanced user and start to use your UTXO individually to make sure that it doesn't share, it doesn't send, use another UTXO to combine it. Um, but then it, it, it is actually like nobody actually does that. Yeah. It's, so, it's it, and even services like chains are imprecise and they're imperfect. Yeah. It, it depends upon if I'm paying you often and if I'm using, um, uh, even if I'm using change uh, addresses and all those kinds of things, often it's that interrelationship between known wallet addresses and your addresses that starts building sort of a breadcrumb trail. And that's a privacy issue. For chains, it has a feature, but I mean, look at what Zach XBT has. I mean, he's he's got tools that you can pull that out of any blockchain, right? So not mm -hmm. just um, Ethereum, of but yeah, yeah. It, but block. Let's just say this: we're we're talking about UTXO blockchains where you are the bank. Really, where privacy becomes a concern is a hundredfold more so on EVM accounts based blockchains it, it, there is of course you can't even easily today spend from multiple uh, uh the average user cannot spend today although i think they're trying to work on that i'd have to read up more on it spend from multiple addresses at the same time or move funds from one address to another it, it's always going to be related to that one account and so that's why, of course, people use things like Tornado Cash, which is another <laughs> one that has a had a mixing service in it. Um, also, some scammers, by the way, forked that, I think, that I heard. Um, so be careful when you're using those. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, so when you're using those services, you're not necessarily doing illicit activities. You're just like, man, I don't need everybody to see. I don't, I don't need my, well, again, I use my, uh, you know, the, the guy who's mowing my lawn. He doesn't need to see that my Ethereum account has, you know, 150 Ethereum. I wish it did. 150 <laughs> Ethereum in there, um, you know, because I'm paying him, you know, you know, 50 USDT maybe this week for the lawn, um, you know, so he doesn't need to see what I have in there. And yeah, yeah that's exactly the problem. There's nothing especially wrong with, with that. Yeah, especially I was just thinking you don't even need chains or anything like basic use of a block explorer. I look at where I, where I got funded from. I I can go back where those funds came from, and then if it, I, I I eventually get to a uh, an address that has some staking in it, and I see some funds coming, I assume that that's my that's the address, and I can see yeah. more things that way. And like if I'm you know, if people hold millions in, of Divi in an address, now you know how much that is. It doesn't really matter which crypto, of course, but that's the thing. Is like that same person I'm doing business with now has leverage about the next time they quote me. Like, I know that guy has, you know, $200 million or whatever it is. That, <laughs> no, that gets right. exposed without a way to cleave the connection between what I own and what I paid somebody. Uh, so I'm 100%. definitely for the existence of mixers. Uh, I, th I think it should be done in a decentralized way. Like, I think Dash does it that way. Um, I definitely think a mixing service chain could exist. I just would not want to be the one developing the front end for that. Um, I just, I mean, I, I, I hope our technology it, you know, like inspires somebody to make a mixing chain, connects different blockchains to it. 
um, and that they're not in America. <laughs> like, like, how about yeah, this? I wouldn't do this? it. <laughs> yeah, because you can it, see that even with Litecoin, right? They came yeah. with the Mimble Wimble. Yeah. And like, how they many people started use to it? be delisted everywhere, right? Yeah. But when it was understood, or oh, that's my understanding, that in fact it's not the same addresses and all that, mm -hmm. like basically they decided to not accept anything that's coming from Mimble Wimble, but still have Litecoin. Exactly. Right? Still have the Litecoin. I think the but point is this. That, yeah. They is, really reject it. I think it comes down to this. If you break the law and you're using blockchain, you're going to get in trouble. It's a public ledger. Just don't break the laws. It just don't do criminal activity where you're stealing coins from somebody else and then think that at some point in time, you're not going to get caught or don't embrace those people who do do those crimes and publicly announce that you embrace people who are doing crimes, whether you agree that they're criminal or not, it doesn't matter if the world says this is something we're doing. If you think that the those, they, that be, aren't going to look at you when you say, come over here and you promote that, you're crazy. You're crazy. They're not going to see you as some Robin thing. Hood. <laughs> if you break the law, use fiat. If you break the law, you see yeah, yeah. exactly. It's yeah, easier. which is what everyone does mostly, right? Yeah. <laughs> just don't, it's, just not like crypto is marginal if you actually look at frauds and totally. criminal activities. Yeah. Crypto is almost nothing. It's but almost they nothing to compared to the fiat. They, they yeah. tolerate it more in fiat. <laughs> they do tolerate it more. They, I think it the embrace your it, network. I think that's uh, that's what right. some of the banks have been in trouble for is embracing, <laughs> yeah. you know, the whole joke about uh, you know oligarchs using samurai. Um, the fact is, is that if you Google enough and you look yeah. up enough and look at the many huge fines that these different banks have received for doing exactly the same thing, but really doing it within the guidelines of the banking services and literally opening up accounts and allowing money laundering from drug money and and scarily people and all sorts of stuff your banking services have all been in trouble for that in in the tunes of many billions yeah. of dollars i think jp morgan's yeah, the biggest most, one yeah it might be I'd have to look in, into it again, but uh, I, I, there are some really big ones out yeah, there. That's why he doesn't like crypto. It's competition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For that. Exactly. Yeah, maybe so. But I mean, yeah. you can see that every time. They, what they have to pay is nothing. They get a slab on the wrist and then, bye. Yeah. You can continue now. Yeah. yeah. It, is, it is always the same. But <laughs> in fact, we can see that when you are high enough, that's that's the treatment you get. Look at what happened with the big <laughs> exactly. exchange. It's the yeah. same thing. Exactly. It's exactly what it is. If, you, if you're big enough, they're not going to bother <laughs> right. you unless somebody you complains their, and then they'll slap you piece. with a small fine. They just fine. want their piece of the cake. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And look. All right, privacy coins. So we're not against not privacy coins. We are a privacy coin, but not in the way of right. anonymity coins. Bitcoin is a privacy coin, but it's not an anonymity coin. There are anonymity coins, and if it's on-chain, no big deal. But if it's a mixer mm -hmm. and an API and a service and you're bragging about it, you're going to get caught and it's going to be painful. <laughs> right. so. We can segue into... Censorship resistance, because this is all about your data and being able to make sure that uh, that you're in control of your own assets. This is the issue with some of these services is they are API centered. Um, we're talking about desktop wallet. Uh, it's a full yeah. node. It's actually called a reference client, but it's a full node too. Um, I think that's a good start for our next topic. That's right. Yeah. Let's Let's talk about the DV desktop wallet. So the DV desktop wallet has been a little bit uh, in the background for a few years because the mobile wallet was um, getting all the attention, but the, the desktop wallet is actually one of the core of the DV, the DV network, right? Mm -hmm. The desktop wallet allow you to be staking and this is, this is the only way, right? Either through the desktop wallet or the CLI wallet, which is basically the core with, um, you know, cause, um, Command line interface, so it's not it's not really user friendly, but you have all the functionality. And then the desktop wallet is basically built on top of that. 
and allows you to have a full node, like a complete element of the blockchain, uh, of the network that is talking with your peers. So you're completely autonomous. There is no intermediary in between you yes. and your peers and you have a full copy of the blockchain and you're basically uh, ga a guarantee, like you are a guarant of the security of the network, Correct. guarant of the legitimacy of the data. So it is, it is the only way you're truly sovereign um, in a blockchain network, right? Mm -hmm. Like we, we're always talking about um, the importance of uh, the sovereignty, uh, avoiding the censorship, everything that Correct. would allow censorship in an infrastructure. And, and basically the only way is having a full node, like being part of, of this network. Like if you send a transaction, it's relayed directly by your node to your peers. Uh, when you receive a blocks from the network, you add that to, to your database, to your mm -hmm. blockchain, basically. Exactly. And, and it is really the only way we take back control on on our economy right and the dv desktop wallet is actually very lightweight um it's it's pretty simple um we actually will talk in the next segment about um what it has and uh, what's coming but it is it is one of the easiest software with which you can take part in the blockchain um yeah it's, I think, it's as simple as that. I think, I think if you go back and if, if you're listening to this, you've probably listened to me before. I'm always trying to encourage people, even from that beginner blockchain level, to just pick up books that you can review and know that when you review them, it's going to be over your head. I just start with that. Just start with that right there that, that sometimes unless you're a nerd, this is going to be over your head. And that's the way I started. But there's a great book by Andreas Antonopoulos, um, yeah. which is called Mastering Bitcoin. I know, Rob, you have it. I don't know if you mm -hmm. have it, Neeks. I know Random String has it. Um, a lot of people have it. It's not a book that you just wake up on Saturday morning and go, I want to read. You're, you just, it's not, not a, a book for pleasure unless you're absolutely curious. My point in bringing that up is that, that the version two of the book, which you can still get, there's a version one, a version two, a release one, release two, release three is coming. Um, editions, a third edition, sorry. Not release, I'm thinking of software. Um, it's a third edition is coming. The second edition has an image in there, It's in, and he uses a term which you may have seen me use. You probably just heard me use it. Andreas calls it a reference client. Because a full node is a full node has got the full blockchain. A full node may have a routing node on it, but a full node may not also have a wallet, but it can. So we have those three things. But the desktop is actually all four. And that's what makes it a reference client because it's got the wallet, it has the mining function, it has a Divi miner in it, it has the blockchain, and it has a routing node. Really, when you have those four features all together, you are the blockchain. You are a node on that network, both supporting and building and routing and validating everything. And so if we just go back to what I stated in the previous segment, you don't have an API that you need to reach out and get your information from you're actually communicating as part of the actual blockchain. So any data and information you want is right there at your fingertips. When you process a transaction that you're sending out, you don't send it to anyone else. You send it right out through your own node to the blockchain, to that what's called a memory pool where all the transactions go. You don't have to go through someone else and I know that we embrace these new technologies, but and, and I, I do mean to be a little bit dismissive when I make this statement. It seems to be that crypto has turned away from where Satoshi was wanting us to go, and they've gone back to like 1992, and they're embracing AOL because uh -huh. they're going through somebody else's service to both get their information, this is data, to send their data, <laughs> to, to manage their data. Everything is done through somebody else. It's not centralized to the point to where they have keys. You still own your keys, but really to do anything 
to display your data, sync your data, manage your, manage your coins, whatever it is, you have to go through AOL to get there. And that doesn't make sense. This is freedom. This is the way, almost the way the internet really got started and even was before we had the big companies come back in is there was a little bit more freedom in, in, involved, a little bit more autonomy involved, a little bit more sovereignty. This is what Satoshi wanted us to do, which is to run our own nodes. Doesn't mean everybody's going to do that, but Satoshi wanted us to run our own nodes. And the Divi desktop is super easy and will pretty much run on almost anything. And the core certainly will pretty much run on anything. I know there's some changes that'll come that'll make it run on even more devices and, and make it even more lightweight. So I'm excited because when you're acting as an operator on the blockchain, you are totally free. And that's yeah, what gotta, excites me. Yeah, you got to remember though, like, I mean, I know you know this, but it's a lot like getting your food from your garden versus getting your food from the store, right? So I enjoy having a garden. It's way more work. I think the food is better. I think everything is better about it, but yeah. it sure is easier going to the store. <laughs> you know, getting maybe something worse. Um, uh, but I think it's more like it, going to fast quickly. food. I think I think it's because when you go to the store, yes, you can buy pre-prepared. But generally, you I would hope to think that most people are not. I mean, at least if they're buying cheese or eggs or something, you yeah. know, you know they're going to make something with it. It's more like you're going to fast food for every meal. If you don't think you're going to feel sick after a while. You're crazy. <laughs> you just yeah, can't eat I, a I was Big getting Mac more at the convenience that, that going to the yeah. store, you're relying on somebody else, right? And yeah, and and it might be fine for a while. Uh, the stores might be fine for a while, and then they're not. Like that just happened to us, yeah. to everybody on the planet, right? <laughs> so, uh, and it happens more often in places like Venezuela. But to everybody on the planet, we all had we all had supply shock all of a sudden, and that's because we all rely uh, to some degree on somebody else serving us and. When it's massive, it does work uh, for the most part, but you're relying on it always working. Whereas when you're on, when you're running your own node, you're relying on you. You you built your garden. It's a good garden. It works all the time. Like let's pretend we don't have winters because we don't. <laughs> so, um, but or let's say you got a greenhouse, um, and it just keeps on working. You gotta check it. You gotta you know you gotta make sure it has power. You gotta make sure your internet's up. It, it's you, um, but. Uh, you're definitely in control of all your funds. And more importantly, you're in control of the information that goes in, in and out of your house. Um, so it's definitely more work. And I think some people, but what, what Voice is saying is like this desktop, it's, it's, I mean, you use your computer anyway. Like it's not much more work. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. I mean, so, you just right you and, let it sink. <laughs> so, yeah, right. I that's mean, right. And, and I mean, we, there are still things that, actually make it a bit inconvenient and that's that's the reason right that's the reason people are using a lot more centralized options which is really um, probably the most far away you can think about the objectives of crypto yeah. but there are also people who use like light wallet models right like we actually have the dv mobile wallet which mm -hmm. is used by people who would uh, most likely never want to use a desktop wallet because they actually like the convenience of of this situation and it is yeah. obviously it's not a centralized wallet it is uh, it is your keys uh, nobody else get a copy of your keys so it is it, it is, is a, a very centralized good wallet let's just right? make that clear it is a centralized wallet it's a self custody centralized wallet the wallet yeah, yeah. won't run unless you connect to those APIs let's just be clear about that that is that is what that is what all light wallets are. So this isn't a nitpick on any specific wallet. Exodus, Trust Wallet, Coinbase Self Custody, all of those wallets are centralized from that point of data. They can't know anything unless they connect to an API. They are just the and it shells. Is the same for web wallets, right? Wallet yeah, web Connect, wallets, totally. and MetaMask yes. Wallet, and all those yep, wallets. All hundred percent, hundred percent. Again, yes. they are they are a. a like still a very good secondary option because Absolutely. again it's your keys those are still trustless there's it's still very important like those those characteristics are very critical but for the convenience we tend to um you know forget that having your own node and validating the transactions and t make like being part of the blockchain is actually what makes that alternative viable
right? Like if nobody Correct. was running a node, there There'd would be, be no, no blockchain. blockchain. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. If there were if there were no full node for Bitcoin, if there were no miners, if there were no like again some validators, miners for sure. uh, Ethereum, there would be no network. Like no no transaction would be moving. Exactly. Like it would, you would exactly. click send, but it would not happen. So <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it is very important to remind that and and to see what the DV wallet offers for, for this situation, right? And if you really want to interact with the blockchain, verify transaction, look at the history, um, check, like you can actually do pretty intense management. And right now it's Easily. not uh, implemented in the wallet, but we will, we will definitely add that moving forward. But you can manage currently your unspent transaction. You can start a staking vote. Um, I think you, we've talked a, a lot about that, but it is a, a unique feature that we have that is really allowing very easily with one or two clicks to, to get a staking vote, a remote vote that is a component again of the blockchain and the blockchain couldn't run without, without those. Without those, exactly. It is already a good option. However, we also want to bring a lot more to this wallet, right? Yeah. Um, so some of the things that we're bringing, Vice, maybe you want to talk about that, the, the change for the phone, uh, the backup. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I thought you said change for the vault. <laughs> yeah, the, no, changes. So the changes. The changes. I was like, the... change? I, I'd like your vault change. If there's <laughs> yes. change. Sure, send me your change. Um, <laughs> well, you know, we, we talked about, uh, well, actually, it's been a big topic for us. Um, there are uh, the changes in the tiers, right? That's the one thing. And that's been... I can't. I can't even tell you how many requests I've had for that. It's it's been more than or, uh, than I can count, because I do help out in the, in the support portal, and um, people have asked for tiers higher than the platinum tier. So those will be coming. Um, the other thing that uh, that uh, is a future topic that's coming, um, and maybe it'll coincide with the release of the new tiers. Uh, I'm hopeful that it will, and it it probably will. But there. There is the goal of a different tier uh, of fee structure will change. Um, right. That requires, of course, a lot of negotiation. It requires a lot of uh, work on the teams that are putting all this together. But I think everybody will be excited about that. So you'll see some uh, tier changes, increases, and you'll see some price changes um that won't be increases this is this right. is a great thing so yeah. keep Everything that keep that down. there it will not right. be an increase well obviously a diamond tier is a bigger tier so there may be some differences in cost there but um that is huge for us and i'm happy that that is coming because i'd like to see those nodes um some of them are self-staking um come back online that would be great because when they're self-staking of course that does require, if you're a full node, a reference client, as I said earlier, you got to keep it on all the time. And some of those people that I've met don't either A, want to, some do, but some don't, don't want to leave it online all the time, or B, they don't have a, a stable internet connection. That's the great thing about these remote servers. They have commercial quality stable internet connections and allows them to perform really well so yeah so i think there's also something that you were working on because of your fantastic graphic skills i'm teasing um we're talking about eventually a <laughs> better than mine right yeah it's better than rob's yeah. look, look at our avatars i think i, I think mean, rob's yeah, avatars both know where one. i started from so yeah, you know, yeah. Sure <laughs> your eyes are still crying <laughs> your eyes are still crying but i think we're we're talking about um uh, well and the next next thing i was going to mention was the the reskin reskin mm -hmm. so we're yeah that's we're working right. on so a style i don't i don't know how fast it will come but no i just want to make sure that it is it is clearly communicated that's that's an objective for us um, one of the things that I think you didn't mention that I think is actually more important on a, on a short time frame Multi -wallet. is having the option to have a local backup of the blockchain. Oh, I didn't even mention that. You're right. Because this is one of the biggest, um, you know, a, a biggest problem when people have a bad connection or um, 
like every time they want to open their wallet. And we both know uh, how the, the core can be a little bit sensitive sometimes. So if you, you know, brutalize a little bit the core by closing your computer a little bit too fast, um, like if you have a, mo a mobile computer and then you close the lid and you didn't, you didn't turn the DV wallet off, you will have some changes that it will actually be broken and it will have to resynchronize the whole blockchain. So we did bring the primer a few years ago, which yeah. is definitely bringing a lot of help. But, but in fact, we will also get um, local backup of the blockchain so that hopefully you never have to sync again the, the full sync. So we're working yeah. on that right now. Um, one of the other things that we want to bring is the uh, multi-wallet management system. So exactly. as part of the DV 3.0, the blockchain improvement that, that was uh, released in August, um, there is a multi-wallet feature that you can now move from one wallet to the other without having to restart the core. And, and it's, it's actually pretty, um, pretty good to manage multiple wallet. If you're m managing multiple wallet for your family or even for yourself, because sometimes it's good to manage in different accounts, Business uh, account. then that would mm -hmm. be a lot, um, a lot more easily accessible now uh, in a direct one click feature uh, within the wallet. And so another thing that we've been working on is the oh, multi six yeah. setup. Um, that was actually one I, of your. It's it's yeah it's 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 actually something that I helped contribute on. Um, that is actually pretty much in the system right now. It's actually in the desktop. It's not finished yet, but the multi sig setup is there to where multiple parties can then fund an address, and then those funds won't move unless uh, like two or three of those parties approve that. So it's it's good in business situations. So yeah, we have the multi-wallet, which could be good in a business situation. And then you can tie that with the multi-sig, multi-signature setup and management. All of that is handled through, uh, uh, we could call it Vochi, although we called it Mochi before, but it makes it really easy for people to set up, back up, preserve their multi-sigs this is very geeky most people won't use it but if you wanted an extra level of security for your funds and you wanted to let's say cold storage or set something aside um it's a perfect it's a perfect perfect setup for that so very excited about that i'm glad you brought up about the back chain block up too it was um it was something that uh, that uh, was you just said the back chain block up back chain the back chain block. Up. I was That's, confused. I love it. It's the back chain block up. The 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 uh, primer. Um, it's a pain. It's the primer is something that I have to say. Just like the multi sig, I had a hand in. Right, the primer I used to give people. Remember that, Rob? People would have. Yes. They didn't want to sync, and so then from a centralized machine, I would create the the backup, and then they would install that blockchain data, and then they'd sync right up. I didn't like yes. that, but it was convenient for them. And then I was sending that, and I was storing it on 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 a different service that Firefox had created, and then people were downloading that and 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 restarting their machines. That still makes me uncomfortable. I don't like being that centralized source, just like you don't like being the centralized person for the DAO. So right. we created the server that is connected to the blockchain all the time and creates that backup. In this process, that is the um, the regular backup, it's copied from your own backup. It's stored in a special folder. And then if you have a sync problem, it just will be replaced. It'll just take what your copy was and move it right back in and you'll sync up right away. So we have... What is that? How many things are we talking about? We've got new tiers. We have reduction on pricing coming, right? We have an optional local back chain block up primer sync additional <laughs> replacement. We have a reskin, which we can't yeah. even talk about yet because that's... I'll talk, I'll that's, talk about the reskin. Yeah. Well, uh, well, let me just talk about that. We've got three and then we have multi-wallet management, which I've used, by the way, and it's pretty freaking awesome. And then, of course, we have multi-sig management coming. The desktop is having a lot of things coming to it. So I'll let you talk about complete reskin again um, so, if you yeah. want. So this is more about longer term, right? Yes. Um, I, we just want to reiterate that the desktop wallet is here to stay. And it is here, like, 
it is going to get some focus back. It was again a bit abandoned by it was um, definitely all the resources going for the legitimately for the mobile wallet because we really wanted a mobile wallet. And but now we can kind of refocus on what is the the core of the ecosystem, which is the full node, right? And so some of the things that we will be bringing is a full reskin. Like we want the, this desktop wallet yeah. to look uh, recent, to look uh, attractive, and and currently it is extremely practical and it works. It works very well, but it's not really pretty. It's not really <laughs> attractive, and I, I think we can do a lot on that front. Uh, it's not pragmatic. Modern. Doesn't make beautiful. Sorry, pragmatic it's not doesn't make oh. beautiful. It's not modern. It doesn't. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, true. That's true. Yeah, that'll, but that'll it, be nice. It wasn't intended to be, um, you know, a full, a full fledged with a lot of different, um, you know, designs and all that. It was really intended to be a minimum viable product at the time, mm -hmm. and then the the mobile wallet kind of really took the whole focus. But it is um, what what is actually interesting is that the full node allows you a lot more capabilities than the light wallet can offer. Totally. And it is also easier to, to develop on it. So one build, of the things yeah. that will be interesting is the kind of features that we will be able to bring when the side chains will be coming, right? Yeah. So when the side chains will be coming, one of the things that I just wanted to bring as, as kind of a teaser of what will be coming is the advanced staking vote. So the yeah. advanced staking vote is one one the hardware that you are able to with which you are able to run a staking vote right now um, you will be able to secure multiple chains with that and so the idea would be that the more chains you want to secure you would probably need um, larger hardware and then you would have tiers for that but then the idea is to have a marketplace for those side chains where they will you will be able to see the security audit uh, the rate of return uh, how many like who deployed the side chains the number of validators that you see there, um, how, how long has this sign chain be, been up for, the volume, and basically all the key data that you would want to see to pick up the side chains that you would want to secure and, and now allocate it to your advanced staking vote. And the idea is really to offer the ability for users to control all their nodes through the desktop wallet Correct. moving forward. So that would Pretty be a very wild. interesting thing. Pretty wild. Imagine, imagine just opening up your desktop wallet and saying, "Okay, I've got my, I got my vault running here, and there's these side chains running, and I want to support this side chain. What else do I need to deploy? And what is, what is my rate on return? Yeah. Again, Satoshi had this set up to where it's a beneficial competition." participation when you win you earn he wanted to not create a carrot and stick environment it's it's do the work and earn and that's essentially what is coming to the desktop is other features other opportunities other functions that allow you to participate provide utility to that service chain and and then earn for that so that's just crazy that's so yeah. that's so awesome I think it's really neat. I, like if, if you look at, so I uh, participate in some other blockchains and what I'm thinking of if it right now is like Polkadot. And, and there's a lot of them where you delegate your funds and all you do is you're looking for the ones that stay up the most uh, and reward <laughs> you the most. And then that's it, right? And you pick those yeah. and then you go away and you check on it once in a while. You check on it every day, you check on it every month, whatever. Uh, but now we're offering something with way more color. Like, because the, it's not just some delegator, it's, hey, there's a whole side chain doing a thing. Maybe it's an NFT, maybe it's a marketplace, whatever. That's, you're supporting, you're, you're supporting a specific utility itself rather than Correct. just, you know, rather than just, ooh, definitely you're like, you want to, you want to participate in the ones that are giving more, more fee, uh, more fees to you. However, the more people that do that, your share will be smaller without a doubt. So there's a whole thing about about is it something that is interesting that people will that will grow with people using it you want to yeah. support that are the fees that i'm getting now good do it do, will they be getting better in the future because of the growth of the platform uh sure. is it secure now is it like there's a whole bunch of variables that, that make it far more interesting as opposed uh, for what people will will route their compute towards 
Yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm definitely looking forward to it. It's gonna be way neater than than anything out there that's exists now. I think, and, it, the, and it's a ahead. full market, right? So, yeah. what would be interesting is that the deployers, the ones who are deploying side chains, will actually like validators bring legitimacy to your side chain, right? So mm -hmm. they will be finding to bring good conditions to those validators and also good conditions to the users. And the competition will be like, a lot of the competition will be there, right? Being able to offer a good situation to your validators and a good situation to your users. And you will see the same thing as you have with token and any other things. Like you will have probably very high rewarding short-term thing that will come a side chain that will come with very high reward for whatever, like you see for, you know, the meme token and all that. But then you will have longer term, maybe lower reward, but a lot more sure um, with side chains that will be uh, really established, having been deployed by, you know, deployers who have deployed dozens of side chains yeah. that are working very well, that are all audited. And you, you will have a full market, basically. That would be very full market. Yeah. I think I think that's a that's that's the key thing. We are we want to get involved in something. I mean, some people will do it because they're altruistic. Other people will do it because I earn. In this case, you'll you'll have the option to do both. Um, you'll be able to pick whatever utility that you think that you like, or you may just say, "Well, yeah, that one helps me earn more." Um, the the fact is is that earnings can also be influenced, like you said, by participation. If a chain goes down in the earnings, that may be a cue that this side chain is actually healthy because that means that more validators are interested in participating. It's a yep. balancing act. It's a seesaw. And so if too many people join, then somebody will say, well, I'm not earning enough to my participation. They leave. And then of course your earnings go up. If it's, if you earn a lot in the beginning, it may be because that there's nobody else there. And so you're taking risk in, and, and you deserve to earn more because of that risk, because there's fewer participants. So each chain will have its own holistic environment. Yeah. And you'll have to you'll have to watch that and see that community, see that movement. And it's it's the fact that the desktop will make all that possible yeah. is a, is amazing. And you're really part of it because it, like just to be un, make sure it's understood, when you are staking on these side chains, you're you're earning fees. There's no minting happening. Like you're not automatically yeah. getting stuff. So you could be there. There could be you know there could be two hundred st uh, stakers there, and there could be a lot of use, which means a lot of funds are coming in from the main chain into that side chain and you're earning fees from there, or yeah. there could still be 200 stakers and less. So the amount <laughs> you're getting is, is, uh, has to do with how many stakers there are, but also whether it's people use it or not. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So like it's, it's really, it becomes very interesting on how the different how it's complicated. Um, and, and, and it'll be fun. There is none. On, on us, right? On the side chains that we will deploy, there will be no minting. But nothing prevents oh, it's possible to yeah. actually start it a side chain yeah. and yeah. actually yeah. have some token in there that okay. they reward people with. Sure, but they won't be minting <laughs> Divi, is what I was meant to say. No, yeah, no that's right. Divi is separate. Right. They, can right. their own, they can yeah. mint their own coins, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I don't know what it looks like, but I do think we can make, I think there is a concept of a of a side chain that is for DAOs, like oh, not yeah. just not our DAO, but for DAOs, and the and we can come up with with possibilities for their consensus protocols, uh, and provide that that side chain with things that just make building a DAO easier. Because I'm you know, trying to build one, and it's it's not easy. Uh, you could go with a platform, but then it's not flexible. Um, yeah. so those are the two problems with the way it is now. Um, so with some thought and some, you know, brain power towards it, you can certainly figure out, um, a, a, a system by which having a DAO chain, uh, makes building DAOs for coins, especially attached coins. It, may, it doesn't have to be, but, but especially attached blockchains, um, easier, uh, and then you know, that would have made, that would make my current life easier if that existed, but it doesn't. <laughs> exactly. um, but certainly the proposals, the voting, the funding, the treasury storage, uh, NFTs, whatever, 
all of that stuff could be inclusive on this particular side chain and be usable by all the DAOs that it supports. And then you don't have, and first of all, and then it becomes way cheaper than doing it on Ethereum. And then I know people are moving to Polygon because it's cheaper there, but it's still just uh, the smart contract methodology. Whereas embedding all this stuff might make it far more liquid, a lot more easier to use quicker and so forth. Um, so I can see a possibility where there's a chain dedicated to this, yeah. facilitating this, and that's a utility chain. And you know, we would build it for Divi first, um, and then other people might build it for their coins, and other people might attach their chains to it so that they can have DAOs there too. Wouldn't that be cool? Oh, that's Wouldn't the that interesting cool? part. Right. Yeah. Something that's really interesting with that is that, again, as any sidechain is its own business case, it becomes interesting even for, um, you were talking about those platforms where you can, you can build the DAO. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that's important is that whenever we build DAO, like we're going through that with Divi, um, it is often not something for which you have a lot of budget. Right? It is often not something where project actually want to spend a lot of money because there are so many other things to spend money on. Yeah. And so it ends up that uh, everyone tries to build their own little thing uh, everywhere. And mm -hmm. basically a lot of people need a DAO, but there is no offering besides those platform to, to really offer a solution for everybody. And an obvious limitation to that was the lack of interoperability between blockchains, right? Yeah. Like it, is, it was not possible to uh, invest a lot of money and a lot of resource to be able to build the most adaptive DAO platform that would be, you know, that would serve everybody. So instead you have one that tries to do that on Polygon and actually a dozen there and then the same on Ethereum and, and all that the side chain offers the possibility to now have a really like a, a you know a swiss knife to mm -hmm. for DAOs that is now compatible with every different blockchain so it could motivate anyone to spend the proper resource to actually build that um improve that side chain and and we could actually seek partnership for that uh with Again, like some of the biggest platforms for DAO, maybe they would be interested because I, again, I believe the sidechain is the future of the interaction of on blockchain, and it it is for them an interesting business case because it opens completely their user base versus being stuck on on one of those chains. Yeah, what's the first thing we had to do to make a DAO? I had to make it. We had to make a Ethereum based Divi coin. I mean, yep. <laughs> like you, that, and go that through kind of, a bridge. Yes, right? and uh, that kind of right. go through a bridge exactly. Right. And, and then you, you got to buy so five hundred. <laughs> yeah, you can't yeah, just so buy now one. you're voting for a decentralized project, but you have to go through a centralized step. So yes. this is this is definitely not great, but it's not the case for for all the projects. But definitely, they have to find a tool which is um, on the blockchain that they are on, mm -hmm. service like a side chain do not um do not force you to do that they right. they definitely are compatible with every different blockchain and so yeah it is a much right. more interesting solution than what you have now yeah, yeah. and side chains can connect to side chains so like you can build a side chain that does your project you can have a coin whatever that's fine and then you can connect it to the DAO side chain i mean it, it's it all kind of works nicely like this it doesn't have to uh uh, it doesn't have to be so discombobulated like the entire crypto space is right now. Um, you know, everybody, I think we, we're still suffering from everybody wanting to be the next Bitcoin or the next Ethereum. And instead of saying, let's work with all of this, it's getting better, but it's, that's, I think we're still suffering from that in the, in the entire industry. Like there's new blockchains coming out. Why? And I don't think <laughs> you know. it will go away soon, right? Yeah. I do believe that it is actually the way innovation works, right? Mm -hmm. Like there is the big thing that everybody would want to replace and, and they come with their new approach. Um, one thing that sidechains bring is that now it's not one and one and one and you have thousands of isolated blockchains. Right Now it's just a piece of 
the big picture. Yeah, it's like a map. This new blockchain with this new approach can be connected through a sidechain. And now it's just offering a new approach and we can see if it survives or not. And it, yep. it really opens opportunity for everyone. While the cost is higher than going through a smart contract, right? It is, um, once you are interconnected, you're not isolated like when you start your own layer one and now you have to explain why you're different. Right. Now you can you can just have this different service and just focus on it. You don't have yeah. to recreate a whole economy because that's not that's not the purpose. Yeah. And yeah. and honestly, you say the costs are higher, but you know, these are pretty lightweight nodes. Um and I think in the general cost of, of running a project with the marketing, with you know, with the tech building, with the pro with the front end and back end, you know, development. I don't think it's, I don't think running like a, a bunch of nodes is actually that big of the piece of the pie um, for a new project. I mean, it's definitely more than, than a smart contract, which once it's in, doesn't cost anything anymore. Um, That's true. But I don't think it's a huge piece um, of, of a legitimate project. Let's put it that way. Um, no, no, the costs are definitely not prohibitive. It is actually yeah. very cheap. But the thing is yeah. that when you compare to smart contract, right. where you basically do three clicks and then, um, but, you know, with all the risk yeah. that it actually carries, right? It is yep. it is the actual problem. So there is a little bit more involved in, um, in starting a sidechain project. Um, however, if you want just the base one and change a few things, we'll have... We would have models for that, that that you can reuse and you can very easily start a sidechain that would be basically like a duplicate of some other sidechains that are very basic. However, if you want to go further, you will need you will need some specialized developers. A bit like for smart contracts, right? If you mm -hmm. actually want a smart contract that will do exactly what you want, you, you will have to hire developers yourself. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> some at some point work has to get done. I mean, no matter that's what. That's right. <laughs> so. That's right. I know. I know. It's not a. It's not believed it's, like that, but yeah. well, crypto <laughs> made easy is participation. Developer made easy just means that when the time is there, there will be a progression to where the tools are available to yeah. take those same developers. Be, there is a division between smart contract developers. I'm. I'm going to get in trouble for a second. Smart contract developers are not <laughs> blockchain developers. Let's just right. divide that right there. They will say they're blockchain developers when you're working on a layer one or you're you're spinning up something that's a side chain that's itself a layer one type of side chain. You still need somebody who understands the interactions between a layer one, which is pretty simple. It's pretty clean. It's pretty awesome. And even even tracking certain things is I find it easier than trying to look up things on EVMs, which are accounts based. Um, it's a different, different person, but I think the goal that is overarching is utility made easy for developers. So when we get to that point, people will be able to build and hopefully with some templatization. Um, yeah. Which, which, which I don't know, we can, we can continue the DAO conversation, but I'm going to add this that I've started working on the, um, the subscriptions tool. <laughs> so I'm just going to, that mm. needs to be I developer think, made easy. <laughs> it's I think not there's, right still, there's still some somewhat blockchain developers. Let me explain to you why I say that. Okay. You'll um, be my savior. <laughs> 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 no, but if you look at actually game developers, right? Um, someone who is responsible for animation probably has no idea about how the netcode works, right? And so they're still game developers. So in a way, they are, they're part of the crypto ecosystem. They're definitely not blockchain layer one experts, right? Yeah. But if they develop smart contracts, it's nowadays it's a big part of crypto. So I would well, say I that they're, they're still... API developers, right? I mean, that's essentially we're, we're talking <laughs> scripts. about developers. They're scripts yeah, developers. They're script developers, and they do make some complicated smart contracts, right? There's no mm -hmm. question that those contracts they should be audited, even after they're audited. Let's not even go down that rabbit hole because even with the ones audited, they've all been <laughs> hacked. 
uh, that yeah. may be a hyperbole, but if you, you look at the numbers Neeks has generated, it's very sad. Um, you know, so it, it, I've lost my train of thought, but the fact is, is that there's still a difference between a person who's working on a core and building features in a core or maximizing features in the core. What we're, what I hope that we'll have is something in between because we don't need a, a developer. We don't need developers per se embracing the technology that needs to touch a core but they should be something in between that in an easy process where they can be a smart contract developer in an EVM type chain and then transition to. But it should also be easier for the nerdly developer if we templatize things or at least if we give the tutorials that, that, are, that are properly um, cleaned up, uh, identified, documented. It should be easy, especially with the crypto you made easy crypto utility made easy philosophy. I think that's what I'm bridging there. We just need to clarify sometimes when we chat, smart contract <laughs> developers aren't blockchain developers. And to Ooh, bring back, titles. to bring it back to the side chains, right? Like yeah. the side chains will use some smart contract mechanism, Correct. but it's not the way it communicates with the outside, right? So it's very important. Those smart contract will be um, basically fixed again. You can have a um, sidechain that will offer you the exact same experience you have on Ethereum. And Correct. we will actually have that. It's just that it's a lot less interesting because it doesn't, it doesn't solve all the issues that the other model solves, right? So that's why we really focus Correct. on the sidechain model that are really dedicated to a service. But really... Um, I think I lost. Oh, yeah, no. The, the thing that is really interesting is the way, and we were talking about that last time with the data, like blockchain data providing, um, the yeah, the cloud data providing. Yeah. And here it's it's basically the same thing, right? For the DAO, one of the things that um, Rob and actually Voice had to look into is getting something that is collecting data from Divi, right? Collecting the the addresses and their balance from DV to see the votes that are active and being able to distribute um, the voting NFTs, right? Yes. And so yeah. for that, you have to have a centralized point, right? And I quote unquote Oracle that is reading data on one place and that is throwing the data is in another place so that it is actually informed. With this, the sidechain model, you don't need that anymore. You don't need it because at all. now the validators are actually also your data providers, and Correct. they're part of the consensus. And now you obviate the, necess the necessity to have those centralized oracles, right, or um, trust minimized oracle systems. Correct. And and it is it is a complete change compared to what you what you have now as as an offering, right? So it's so web this four DAO side chain is really would have unique capabilities. Web 4.0, it, oh, it, it, no, it brings saying, it back. It. We, <laughs> what'd you say? You're saying Web 4.0. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, don't I, say like, that. Whenever other people do that, I, I, I cringe. I'm like, just I, having I, fun. I've now it's, seen, I've now seen 5.0. <laughs> I know. There's no, Web 5.0. Especially that it's we're, actually we're the, th the true 3.0. It's true like, 3.0. It's like, it is the decentralized yeah. one. That's that's yes. how it works. Yep. Because we're, we've yeah, gone away again. I, I made that 20, 30 minutes ago. I said... <laughs> We've done with crypto what AOL was doing. We we yeah. make them some centralized, oracleized, or some. They are the gatekeeper essentially. And if and if it's on chain, if it's available to everyone, you don't need AOL. You don't have to go through AOL to then click an icon to go to the internet. Mm -hmm. That was remember, Rob. You're old enough. You might remember. Yep. Neeks was yep. like two when that happened um you, you click your aol and uh, look i'm bald look at my beard here you can see it on my avatar i'm really old um you can click that you click your aol icon you've got mail and you waited for it to load and it took forever and you took this link that was this earth link and it would take you to the internet which you had no idea where you're going it's faster today it's easy today. It's still is centralized today. If we make it on chain and it's available immediate to everyone, you don't need oracles anymore. You just get the data directly. You don't need somebody right. to be your authority. It's magic. And that is true web 3.0. Maybe that's, <laughs> that's right. what we should trademark.
<laughs> true, what I, true, true Web 3.0. Let me see yeah, if it's an I, available I, domain. I, I do believe yeah. that it is actually the future of blockchain interoperability. So I don't, I don't even think we have to trademark it. I think it would <laughs> just come naturally that, yeah. that this is the actual uh, better solution. So that that would be a very interesting. Yeah, somebody uh, owns the domain. Future commentary. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> somebody owns the domain. Of course they do. Of course. <laughs> All right, guys. Cool. So that was, so, um, that I was think a, we got I, everything. pretty good episode. Yeah, I think we went <laughs> through so. everything. Um, so again, we'll invite you to ask questions, ask questions on the video, ask questions on Twitter, wherever you feel more comfortable with. And whenever we have enough questions, we will we'll have an AMA. Uh, right yeah. now, we didn't really do it because we had just one question. We had one question. And it's actually an interesting question. We'll yeah. bring that uh, probably in another episode because... It's basically as, asking for more information on sidechain basics, how it works, mm -hmm. and how it compares to others. So we'll probably make a new episode about that because that that's really uh, the core of what what will be moving, what will be coming next. I think I think that's the main thing that that I really stressed. We're going back many many years, and we go back to Telegram. And when I first got started in support, people always said, "Why don't you go to DM?" And this was before we were concerned with everybody's security and all. And I, that sounds bad. It's before we all mm -hmm. were concerned with security and thinking DMs were bad. And then it turns out, yeah, look at that whole problem. But the point is, is that I said, no, I don't want to go to DMs because as I write my answer to Neeks, Rob is sitting quietly and he opens up his, his device on his computer or his phone and he goes, Hey, that's the same question I had, or, Hey, that's the same issue I had. And so I'm not discouraging you to post on Twitter. What I'm encouraging you to do is if you do post on Twitter, post it on the video topic, right? So where you're watching this video on Twitter or whether you're watching on YouTube, um, you can post the questions below. So see down below where you're watching right now. You have a, a, a spot where you can send in a question. Send in the question there. If, um, if you want, I will also, at the bottom of this, in fact, I guarantee it'll be at the bottom, I will put a link if you don't want to post it and you want it to be a little bit more private. I will also post the link for the form where you can post the link and then we'll have those questions there. So just keep it under the video on Twitter. If you're watching on Rumble, if you're watching any place, just post the questions there. Then what we'll do is we'll bring them all together and then we'll happily answer them on the spaces as, as best as we can, of course. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I would suggest. Keep them all together and so others can read and maybe add to or whatever. We'll keep them all going. Well, that's good. And also topics, well, like if you want, if you have specific topics that you want us to talk about, if there are things that you didn't understand or would like to understand more about, I don't know, some processes happening in, in the desktop on the blockchain or whichever, whichever things that we have, um, just bring it up and we'll be happy to, to bring yeah. it up next time. I'm going to add one support conversation topic here at the end it's not really related to our blockchain it's not really related to the DAO. it's not related to these kinds of things it's not related to spaces either but it comes down to your security um when you send in a question to the support portal uh you will only get a message back that says it's been received and then you will only get a message when it's been updated do not reply to those messages. Make sure you log in. That's the way it's set up. If you read those messages, it tells you to make sure you log into those portals. And um, and that way you stay secure. Anyway, so since we're talking about messaging, check your emails for the updates, but then log into the portal. And there's links. There's a little number that says your conversation has this number. Click that link and it'll open it right up for you. Anyway, sorry, I wanted to digress a little bit. Mission, Mission accomplished. accomplished. I digressed. <laughs> nice. Maybe it'll, so, maybe it'll be cut. Um, no, I'm kidding. Like, subscribe, all that, <laughs> yes. uh, as usual. Click. Uh, follow <laughs> us on Twitter. <laughs> oh, let us know what you think about uh, the new activity, the pace at which it's going. Um, 
Yeah, let us know your feedback. That, and, that would be pretty valuable. And we for did us. get feedback about the avatars. We had like one person who we said did. it was scary or something. So yeah, we're still we doing it. <laughs> we, we had fun doing it. And uh, more comments said that they enjoyed the avatars than they said they were frightened by them. So um, I, I'm looking at Neeks right now. He's he's Neeks opening is, and closing one Neeks eye and the other. It looks like he's having epileptic seizures. I think he's high right now. <laughs> really is, that, is that is that are you? <laughs> we can't really tell, but I think his. Uh, yeah, but, um, <laughs> the avatar is, uh, is sometimes kind of losing it. But... Are you winking at us? <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, that's exactly what that looks like. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, guys. I think that's it. That's a wrap. Right, bye. <laughs>